This video will discuss the enthalpy of transition in thermodynamics. So let's say we're interested in what the enthalpy change is between two temperatures, or specifically the molar enthalpy. So we've taken the enthalpy, which is the internal energy plus pressure times volume, and we have made it the molar enthalpy by dividing by the number of moles. So we have taken the enthalpy, which is an extensive state function, divided it by the number of moles to make it an intensive state function, the molar enthalpy. Okay, so the change in molar enthalpy between two temperatures is the molar enthalpy of T2 minus the molar enthalpy of T1 being a state function. It just depends on what it is of each individual temperature. So this could be the integral from T1 to T2 of dH, which would be the partial derivative of h bar over uh, with respect to T. Uh, integrated over T at constant pressure. So this is also equal to the integral from T1 to T2 of the constant pressure molar heat capacity with respect to temperature because dH dt is, the, is Cp, so dH bar dt is Cp bar. And this is true if there is no phase change between temperature 1 and temperature 2. So what we'll define now is the molar enthalpy change of transition, which is the heat input during a constant pressure phase transition. So you can imagine that most chemical phase transitions occur at a constant pressure. If I put ice in a beverage and then that ice melts, it's occurring under a fairly constant atmospheric pressure of approximately one bar or one atmosphere. So typically, physical and chemical processes are occurring under conditions of constant pressure, so the enthalpy of transition is a rather uh, important concept for us in chemistry. So some examples of this include H, delta H bar of fusion, the heat of fusion, which is how much heat it takes to melt a solid to a liquid, uh, delta H bar of vaporization, which is the heat of vaporization, or how much energy it takes to boil a liquid into a gas per mole of that liquid, and both of these are constant are uh, greater than sorry both of these are greater than zero delta h bar of fusion and vaporization are greater than zero these are what are called endothermic processes they absorb heat it takes heat to break up the interactions of a solid to make it into a liquid or break up the interactions of a solid or a liquid to turn it into a gas okay so for the enthalpy change of something which is a solid where we're below the te temperature of fusion so we're below the melting point at this given atmospheric pressure h of t less than t fuse minus h bar zero is equal to the integral from zero to that temperature of the of the constant pressure molar heat capacity integrated over t if we have a temperature where we're a liquid, where we're higher than the we're higher than the melting point, but we're lower than the boiling point, like as I have defined here, we need to integrate as we did from zero to the melting point of the constant pressure molar heat capacity. Then we have to include the heat of fusion, so delta H bar of fusion, how much heat it takes to melt a mole of that particular solid and then add the integral of whatever it takes to uh, integrate the heat capacity from the melting point up to that temperature. So the heat capacity we can see at phase transitions momentarily becomes infinite or undefined because we're absorbing heat but the temperature is not changing at all. So the heat capacity is not defined for points where we're in some phase transition as I have shown in this graph here. So if we want the enthalpy change going from zero Kelvin to some uh, temperature where we're a gas, then we need to integrate similarly from zero to the melting point of the heat capacity, plus the heat it requires to melt, plus, plus the integral from the melting point to the boiling point of the heat capacity of the liquid, plus the heat it takes to go from liquid to gas, plus the integral from the vaporization point up to uh, whatever temperature we want our gas to be at of the heat capacity of the gas. 
So the important caveat here is that if we want to get the enthalpy change between two temperatures, we have to be careful that there isn't a phase transition during that temperature where we have to take into account the heat capacity of those various phases and also the enthalpy or the heat required during that phase change process.